For two weeks, I've not seen the sun. I've not set my eyes on the sun. I came out for the first time today. Was the first. I left my room today for the first time since on Sunday. I left out of my room for the first time since Sunday. This morning to come to church. And there are some things the Lord has been showing me so clearly. And when the Lord began to show them to me, the Lord said to me, He said, Five percent of people in the church are not born again. I'm not saying twenty. I'm not saying fifty. Five. In the standards of God, they are not born again. On Thursday, as I lay down, I was praying. I was opportune to have an encounter with God. I saw the rapture. And I saw a crowd. And when the Lord showed me that crowd, it was, I mean, bigger than this. Endless crowd. And I saw the angels on the sidewalk. And when it was time to leave, I saw in that crowd only two people. And I was asking the Lord, what is this? He said, I'm trying to show you how many are consistently prepared for my coming. Are you born again? I don't need I don't need you to respond. I don't need you to cry. You have cried several times and still went back to sin. I need you to make up your mind. That is there a relationship with this God? You are pursuing greatness. You are searching for a throne. Anything that will make you consti continually, consistently keep telling God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cut it off. Are you living in the same house with a boy that is not your husband? You are not born again. It's not scarcity. It's not a problem of no accommodation. Do you prefer to go to hell because of a room? It's better to sleep on the streets and make heaven than to sleep in a boy's room and end in hell. Are you born again? What is the source of your income as a lady? What is your major source of income? Your body? That body will end up in hell. Are you born? You see, some poor folks feel we are, we are bigger than this message. Who did Jesus dare to be born again? Nicodemus, a ruler in the synagogue. Nicodemus was not just an ordained minister, he was an officiating ordained council. He was a board of trustees, a member of the Sahendry. The cream de la cream, they decide what happens in the church. Like they said, the shakers and the movers. Those that when they come to church, they come with a very long robe. Some of you have your Bible. It's so big, it's as big as the Ark of Noah. But the Christ is not in you. Are you born again? Repent. Repent. If somebody's on your left and right, tell the person, repent. The vanity and vanity and vanity of this world becomes clearer, evident every single day. Some of you bought a phone five years ago. You are not using it again. Am I correct? Huh? When you bought it, to you it was the best. You bought a phone three years ago, some of you are not using that anymore. It was the best. You bought another one, it was the best. Every day in life, you discover that what you call the best goes out of fashion. You can never catch up with this world. Stop pursuing it. There is iPhone 12 now. iPhone 12. Just, I think that one has four cameras or something. People are trying to recover from 11, 12 has come, and now many want to pursue 12. 13 is waiting, 14 is waiting, 15, 16 is waiting. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. They are waiting. You keep pursuing. Meanwhile, scriptures you don't know, Bible you don't know, but you know the latest phone. Repent. First John five twenty one says, "Little children, keep yourself from idol." 
Repent. Repentez-vous. It's very important. He says, he didn't say God will help you. He said, you, you, repent and be converted. In other words, turn! Repent means a turnaround. 